It's so cheap looking for a high school grad to book a place like this, Richard said loudly enough for me to hear, bringing up my high school diploma even here. It showed how much he looked down on me. Then he walked up to me and said, Why did you choose such a shabby hotel when we're all trying to relax and enjoy our trip? I'm sorry. I thought this hotel would be nice. It's clean, and the meals seem luxurious, I replied. Richard glared at me, then looked at the pictures of the food in the hotel's brochure and said, What's so luxurious about this food? It's just ordinary dishes you can get at any hotel. At that moment, someone suddenly appeared from behind. Isn't that Mike, Mr. Williams? You're here today. Richard turned pale when he saw Mr. Williams. So Richard thinks our place is cheap looking. How disappointing, I said. It's a very nice hotel. Mr. Williams nodded at me with a smile. I'm glad to hear that from you, Mike. So what should we do next? I could see Richard's face contorting more and more. My name is Mike Davis a 42-year-old office worker. I've been with my current company ever since I graduated high school for over 20 years now. If asked what I've achieved in these 20 years, I wouldn't have much to say. The truth is, I have no significant accomplishments. My colleagues who join the company with me have either risen to higher positions or moved on to better opportunities and succeeded. As I looked around, I found that I had become alone, with no one to rely on. Now, 20 years later, I'm surrounded by young people. Since I can't keep up with their conversations, I spend every day at work without saying a word. Not talking about anything other than work is quite comfortable. It means I don't have to talk about unnecessary things. I'm sure I couldn't handle jobs that require discussions. For someone as quiet as me, this current environment is very appreciated. There are surely people who find it strange that I don't get along with my surroundings. But this is a place for work, and there's no need to get close like in private life. I somehow understood that people were avoiding me, but I was satisfied with the status quo and had no intention of changing it. But suddenly, a person appeared in my mundane life. That person was Richard Davis, who became the manager of my company this spring. The manager is 55 years old, older than me, and he had been at another branch until now. He had apparently held quite high positions there and had a lot of experience. My first impression was that he seemed very strict. My prediction was immediately confirmed. Now that I'm the manager, I'm going to set things straight here. Be prepared, Richard announced. Yes, all the other employees responded in unison. I thought to myself that he seemed like a scary person. He reminded me of the strict teachers who enforced school rules back in my student days. I intended to avoid him as much as possible, but I couldn't escape. Mike, come here for a moment, Richard called. What is it? I asked, immediately summoned by Richard. I had a bad feeling about this, and my prediction came true when he showed me the presentation materials criticizing them as sloppy paperwork. I had stayed up all week finishing work for a major client. Because I've been with the company for a long time and understand the work thoroughly, I'm always the one who prepares the documents for clients. Even though I don't stand out much within the company, I'm confident in my document preparation skills, and it's something I've been recognized for. But now, Richard was criticizing these documents. Was there something wrong with them? I asked. Something wrong? 
Everything is wrong. I hate every single word. I've never seen such terrible paperwork, Richard exclaimed. For the first time, I felt truly shocked. I've been called quiet and plain countless times, but it's the first time I've been criticized for my work. However, even though he said he hated every word without specific feedback, I didn't know how to fix it. What should I correct? Could you show me how to improve it? I asked Richard. Don't ask me that. Just redo everything and don't use the same words, he replied curtly. So the documents I had stayed up all week to finish had to be redone entirely. I sighed and went back to my desk. I decided to stay late and redo the documents, but even by midnight, I wasn't close to finishing. I decided to go home, but since the last train had already left, I started walking. As I walked, I couldn't help but think that Richard just didn't like me. While walking, I saw a man collapsed on the side of the road. He seemed conscious, but was lying down looking exhausted. I helped him up and gave him some water from my bag. You've saved me. Thank you, the man said. You're welcome. How are you feeling now? I asked. The man said he was fine and got up on his own. He looked to be in his fifties. When he saw the employee ID hanging around my neck, his expression changed. Oh, you work for one of our clients. Thank you for all your help, he said. What? I was surprised. The man took out a business card from his bag and handed it to me. My name is Williams, Mr. Williams, the CEO. To my surprise, the man was the CEO of the major company I was preparing the documents for. Startled by this sudden encounter, I quickly handed him my business card as well. My name is Mike. I was just about to submit the documents, I explained. So you're Mike. Thank you for always being so thorough, Mr. Williams said with a smile. You knew about me? Your name was always at the end of the documents. I thought the person preparing them must be very capable, Mr. Williams replied. I felt a bit embarrassed by Mr. Williams's sudden praise. They're not much. No, they are very clear and highlight the important points well. They've always been helpful. Knowing that someone appreciated my work made me very happy. By the way, we also run a hotel. Please come stay with your colleagues sometime, Mr. Williams offered. Really? Mr. Williams nodded. Meeting you here must be fate. I look forward to working with you. Yes, I look forward to it as well, I replied with a smile as Mr. Williams walked away. I had been feeling down after Richard scolded me. But meeting Mr. Williams lifted my spirits and renewed my determination to work hard. I spent another week redoing the documents and submitted them to Richard. However, Richard crushed my hopes once again. It took you a week and nothing has changed. I'm sorry, I thought I had rewritten everything, I said. But Richard rejected my work again. All those overtime hours seemed meaningless. To make it worse, Richard tore the documents to shreds. I was wrong to trust you with this. You're just a high school grad, aren't you? Richard's words stung. Yes, I am, I replied, wondering how he knew about my education. You were so incompetent that I looked up your resume, he said. As expected, he had looked at my resume. I had submitted it over 20 years ago, thinking it was buried deep somewhere. But Richard had gone out of his way to find it. I'll handle the documents from now on. You go and polish my car immediately, Richard ordered. His car? I knew he always drove to work, but why did I have to polish it? I'm doing your job so you will clean my car inside and out. Understood? I nodded and headed to the parking lot to clean Richard's car. 
People passing by gave me puzzled looks, wondering what I was doing. I didn't understand it myself. I was incredibly angry at Richard. He had torn up the documents I had painstakingly redone and now had me cleaning his car. Honestly, I felt like scratching his car out of spite, but I held back. After thoroughly cleaning the inside of the car, I returned to the office. Suddenly, Richard started yelling at me. Mike, where did you go during work hours? He barked. I was washing your car, I replied. Richard snatched the car keys from me and yelled even louder. I didn't say to wash it now. I'll dock your pay for slacking off. Richard's harassment continued. One day, the entire staff was scheduled to go on a company trip, and I was assigned to book the hotel. The one who asked me to handle the booking was Richard. Make sure to book the hotel, he instructed. If you choose a bad place, there will be consequences. Understood? Richard's warning echoed in my mind as I quickly decided on the hotel run by Mr. Williams, whom I had met before. I checked their website afterward. It looked very luxurious, perfect for our company trip. I thought even Richard wouldn't complain about this place. Plus, I might get to see Mr. Williams again at the hotel. I was looking forward to the trip. Time flew by, and on the day of the trip, we arrived at the hotel. The other employees were impressed by how nice the place was, but Richard's attitude was different. It's so cheap looking for a high school grad to book a place like this, he remarked loudly enough for me to hear, bringing up my high school diploma even here. Then he walked up to me and said, Why did you choose such a shabby hotel when we're all trying to relax and enjoy our trip. I'm sorry. I thought this hotel would be nice. It's clean, and the meals seemed luxurious. I defended myself. Richard glared at me and then examined the pictures of the meals in the hotel's brochure. What's so luxurious about this food? It's just ordinary dishes you can get at any hotel he retorted. At that moment, someone suddenly appeared from behind. Isn't that Mr. Williams? I didn't know you were here today, I said. Richard's face suddenly changed color when he saw Mr. Williams. So Richard thinks our place is cheap looking. How disappointing, I remarked. It's a very nice hotel, Mr. Williams said, looking at me with a smile. I'm glad to hear that. So, what should we do next? I could see Richard's face contorting more and more. I wondered if Richard and Mr. Williams knew each other. Richard had held a high position in his previous department, so he probably knew other company presidents. I cautiously asked Mr. Williams, Do you know our manager as well? Yes, Richard was very helpful to me when he was in his previous department. We've known each other for a long time, Mr. Williams replied. So, they did know each other. But despite Mr. Williams, an old acquaintance, being right in front of him, Richard didn't say a word. I wondered if Richard felt awkward because he had been overheard saying the place looked cheap. Is this hotel managed by your company, Mr. Williams? I inquired. Yes, it's been over 10 years now, and it's become so popular that we get reservations from all over the world, Mr. Williams explained, still smiling. But it was unnerving. How could he smile if he had heard all of Richard's complaints? I was starting to get confused about what kind of person Mr. Williams was. I see. No wonder it's such a beautiful hotel. I'm glad we could come here with everyone, I said. Do you really think so about our hotel? Mr. Williams asked Richard directly. Richard was no longer smiling. 
Mr. Williams glared at Richard with sharp eyes. Richard, I heard you say our hotel looked cheap. I didn't miss it. Who would say such a thing about the hotel created by the respected Mr. Williams? Richard was visibly flustered. He probably didn't think Mr. Williams had heard everything. I had never seen Richard this panicked before, and I was trying hard not to laugh. I heard everything, so it's useless to lie. Insulting the hotel is the same as insulting our company, Mr. Williams sighed. I thought we could trust each other and do business together from now on, but this is very disappointing. Please consider our next deal cancelled. Wait, it was Mike who insulted the hotel. I'll make him take responsibility. Richard suddenly tried to pin the blame on me. How far will he go to shift the blame? Does he think he's some kind of righteous person? Is he trying to make himself look good to Mr. Williams by making me the villain? But Mr. Williams stood up for me. I only saw Richard saying terrible things to Mike. It also seems like Mike was the one who arranged for us to stay at this hotel. Yes, I arranged the stay at this hotel at Richard's request, I said firmly. It was the truth and I needed to assert myself, or Richard would keep getting away with this. Where's the proof that I said anything to Mike? You can check the hotel's surveillance cameras for that. Richard had no response to this. Didn't Richard realize that hotels typically have cameras? It was beyond ridiculous that he said those things without knowing. Richard was practically stepping on a landmine. If we asked the hotel manager to check the data, it would be clear. Do you still plan to deny it, Richard? I followed up on Mr. Williams's statement. It is an undeniable fact that the manager had me arrange the hotel and then insulted Mr. Williams's hotels. My testimony matches what I heard exactly, so there's no mistake. Mr. Williams then looked at me. It seems like Richard has been treating you very poorly. Is this a regular occurrence? Yes, Richard always speaks to me harshly, because he doesn't like me, I admitted. With Mr. Williams on my side, this was my chance to fight back against Richard. I didn't have any allies in the company, and I hated being constantly berated by Richard. If I continued to follow Richard's orders without resistance, I wouldn't be able to handle document preparation anymore, and more importantly, my spirit would be broken. I just wanted to return to a peaceful life. So it seems strange the documents Mike usually finishes are always well done, but this time they were a mess. A mess. Are you saying my documents were messy? Richard finally revealed his true nature. All this time, he had been trying to make a good impression on Mr. Williams. He only cared about his own reputation. Richard always wanted to look down on others and assert his superiority. I was shocked by how sloppy it was. Why did you prepare the documents instead of Mike, he said. He said he didn't like a single word of my documents, so I redid them. Richard tore them up. Mr. Williams was surprised, by the way. Do you still have the data Mike prepared? Yes, it's on a USB drive. I handed the USB drive I had brought to Mr. Williams. I'm glad I brought it just in case. Mr. Williams booted up his laptop and reviewed my data. These are excellent. This presentation is approved. There's nothing to complain about. Thank you, Mr. Williams, Mr. Williams smiled. I don't understand why Richard rejected such excellent documents. From my perspective, it's Richard's documents that I don't like at all. What's your grudge against me, Williams? Richard finally dropped the formalities, calling Mr. Williams by his last name. 
I could see the other employees around us, freezing in shock, but Mr. Williams remained unfazed. A grudge? Are you talking about the time Richard stole our employees' data when he was in his previous department? What? What stole data? I couldn't help but ask. When Richard and I worked on a project together, he stole data from one of our employees' USB drives, Mr. Williams explained. I told you I didn't do that, Richard protested, but Mr. Williams shook his head. There were testimonies from employees back then. Thanks to that, the project was ruined. So that's what happened, I thought, appalled. Your car's problems in your new department as well, and to think you tried to undermine Mike, whom I respect, Mr. Williams remarked. What's there to respect about Mike? He's useless and can't do his job at all, Richard retorted. I met Mike for the first time recently, but I've always admired his meticulous documents and the thoughtful letters he always attached, Mr. Williams interjected. You noticed I always included a handwritten letter when submitting documents to Mr. Williams's company with brief, light-hearted notes about the seasons or our daily company life. Though I'm not good at communication, I believe that letters could help build connections with people. I always felt your kindness through those letters, Mike. It's a shame Richard doesn't appreciate a good subordinate. That's not true, I added, hurt by what Richard did to me. I'm not apologizing. I did nothing wrong. Mr. Williams looked disappointed. Let's change the conditions. We'll continue doing business with your company if Richard is no longer there. After all, you have Mike on your team. Thank you, Mr. Williams, I said, realizing this was essentially a suggestion to fire Richard. Considering the data theft incident, it's no wonder Mr. Williams doesn't want to do business with a company that employs Richard. I'll report this to your company's president, so please take care of it, Mr. Williams said. I'm truly sorry for the trouble. Mr. Williams smiled at me. I have hopes for you, Mike. By the way, we unfortunately don't have a room available for Richard tonight. Mr. Williams approached Richard and said, You must want to leave a place as cheap as this as soon as possible, right, manager? Give it up. With Mr. Williams and me both telling him this, Richard turned his back and left the hotel without a word. After that, the remaining employees and I enjoyed Mr. Williams's hospitality and had a great time on our trip. Not long after, Richard was fired by the company president and left the company. It was his own doing, so he had no one to blame but himself. The company feels brighter since Richard left. More employees have started talking to me, perhaps because they witnessed what happened during the company trip. I'm still not great at conversations, but maybe Mr. Williams's praise for my work has made a difference. It's definitely more comfortable now. I genuinely feel motivated to work even harder from now on. <laughs>